If you've dabbled in 3D rendering with tools like Blender with Cycles and Max and Mai with Arnold or V-Ray, or maybe game engines such as Unreal Engine, you've likely heard the terms ray tracing and path tracing. Both are techniques to simulate how life travels and interacts with surfaces to produce realistic images. But they work a bit differently. We actually hear a lot about ray tracing, but in reality for 3D work, ray tracing isn't really the best option. In fact, I would say it is a bit outdated. Most importantly, if you want something better, the result is vastly different, but you have to pay a price. Before we continue, let me tell you about Ryzen UV. If you've been around this space long enough, you probably know about Ryzen UV. Ryzen UV is one of the best UV mapping software out there. It is used by professionals all over the world, big game studios, VFX houses, engineers, architects, and even 3D hobbyists. I know it might look daunting, but trust me, it will make your UV mapping days less tedious. The recently released 2025 version comes with a lot of awesome updates, better performance, GPU accelerated packing, improved CPU packing, align 3D to UV, pack group to tiles, scene outliner, and much more. One of these updates is the new selection conversion feature. You see, in previous versions, it only allowed you to select the edges of a chosen polygon, and now it is much more intuitive. You can simply use the same selection mode buttons, while holding shift or control to switch between different selection types, hold shift to select polygon borders, or control to grab the middle edges. And this makes the tool far more versatile and more convenient than before. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description to try Ryzen UV for free today and check the full list of features. As you know, ray tracing has been the go-to method for high-quality 3D rendering for decades. The basic idea is to simulate rays of light traveling from the camera into the scene to determine what they hit and what color they should be. For a long time, render engines and software such as Max, Blender, Maya, and so on relied on ray tracing for those realistic touches. They would trace rays to calculate accurate reflections, reflections, in addition to shadows from the light source. However, traditional ray tracing had its limitations. Typically, a classic ray tracer would only follow a few bounces of light. For example, a ray might reflect off a mirror and then stop, or pass through glass and then stop once it hits a diffuse surface. This meant you got perfect mirror reflections and clear refractions, but you didn't get the indirect light bounces around the room. In other words, all the ray tracing gave you the direct illumination and sharp specular effects, but not the subtle glow of light bouncing off a colored wall onto other surfaces. And to handle those global lighting effects, 3D artists had to use other tricks, like adding ambient light sources, baking light maps, or using methods like radiosity or photon mapping in addition to basic ray tracing. The upside of classic ray tracing was that each pixel was computed with a fixed set of rays and light interactions, so the results came out clean, without noise or grain. The downside was that it still wasn't simulating everything that real light does, and adding those missing pieces like indirect light, soft shadows, etc. was done using brute force, which in turn would explode the render time. And here is a fun fact, early renders in animations and movies, especially in the 80s and 90s, only used ray tracing sparingly. For example, to render a particularly reflective object, or maybe a glass of water in an otherwise skyline render scene, because it was so slow. But as hardware improved, ray tracing got more common, in high-end productions especially. And by the late 90s, films like A Bug's Life in 1998 were using ray trace reflections and shadows to enhance 3D renders. So how do we get all the nuanced lighting effects that basic ray tracing misses? Enter path tracing. Path tracing is essentially an advanced form of ray tracing that doesn't stop at one or two bounces of light. Instead, it traces a lot of rays per pixel and lets them bounce around in random directions, simulating the way light gradually scatters and diffuses through a scene. This means a path tracer can naturally create things like soft and realistic shadows, in addition to indirect light bounces around. I mean these effects bring us much closer to real-world lighting. Or you can put it like this. A path tracer is a ray tracer that can produce soft shadows, depth of field, blur, and so on. In addition to realistic caustics, ambient occlusion, and full indirect lighting, essentially all the lighting nuances that make a render truly photoreal, which we now take for granted to be honest. 
As you can see, the advantage of path tracing is that it follows the physics of light in a very complete way. I mean literally, it deals with light as if it was a real thing. This means instead of adding a bunch of separate tricks to simulate different effects, like shadows, reflections, ambient light, and so on, a path tracer engine handles everything in one unified simulation of light rays. This is why model render engines have been shifting toward path tracing. It generally produces the most realistic results with less manual tweaking. For example, Autodesk Arnold is a path tracer Monte Carlo renderer, known for generating high quality and true to life images with minimal adjustment. That's why when it first hit the scene of 3D, it became popular among big VFX studios because it simply could do a stunning job. Likewise, Blender Cycles, V-Ray, Octane, Corona, and many others use path tracing to deliver photorealistic lighting out of the box. So you simply set up your materials and the render engine's random rays takes care of the complex effects like bouncing and soft shadows automatically. However, this comes with a major downside, performance. Path tracing is computationally heavy. I mean, because it relies on random sampling or the Monte Carlo methods. The image starts off extremely noisy when you only shoot a few rays per pixel and to get a clean and noise-free image, you need to sample each pixel with hundreds or even thousands of rays so that all of those random bounces converge to a stable result, which in turn means longer render times. In fact, when path tracing was first introduced in the mid-1980s, it was considered beautiful, but completely impractical. Just on a side note, the concepts of ray tracing, path tracing, and so on were developed a long time ago, I mean in theory, but their implementation and being practical just took a long time, maybe decades as you can see. Anyways, the original path tracing demo images by Jim Kajia in 1986 were just 256 by 256 pixels, and yet they took 7 hours to render. Even two decades later, using path tracing for entire production was a huge computational expense. The animated movie Monster House was the first film rendered entirely with path tracing, using the Arnold engine. And while it wowed the audiences with realistic lighting, it actually required massive computing power. I mean render farms running for long periods of time to pull off this great masterpiece. It probably took months of continuous rendering just to finish this film, so you can only imagine how hard this was. For you as a 3D artist, the downsides of path tracing become apparent as soon as you hit the render button or try to use an interactive viewport. The image begins very grainy and it might take dozens or hundreds of samples before the noise resolves into a clear image. So a path trace render, which looks really interesting, might take up to minutes or maybe hours, depending on the quality and the resolution of the render, in addition to the effects involved in the process. But here is the interesting thing. In game engines, fully path trace rendering was out of the question for a long time. It was just too slow to do in real time, so developers instead stuck with rasterization and used ray tracing in a limited way for specific effects when hardware allowed it. And only recently, we have seen the first experiments with fully path traced games, like an experimental mod in Cyberpunk 2077 or tech demos like Porto RTX. And those actually required top of the line GPUs in addition to clever upscaling and denoising tricks to be able to run at playable frame rates. In practice, most games today use a hybrid approach. They rasterize the main image and then they use some ray tracing for reflections, shadows, or ambient lighting. A real engine's lumen, for example, is a clever GI technique that uses a mix of screen space effects and simplified ray tracing to approximate light balances in real time, because doing true path tracing for every frame would be far too slow on current hardware. In fact, I would say it is impossible for most cases. Unreal Engine actually includes an optional path tracer for offline rendering, 